What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video we're going to be looking at exercises for an L4, L5 disc bulge or disc herniation. So if you've been to your doctor and had an MRI and found out you have a disc bulge or herniation at the L4, L5 region, or maybe you have pain that goes down the back of your leg, then these will be exercises for you to implement. Before we jump into the exercises, I just wanna review the anatomy a bit so you know what you're working with if you have an L4, L5 disc bulge or disc herniation. If we think about the low back, the lumbar spine, we have five vertebrae. The lowest one here is L5, then we have L4, L3, L2, and L1, and then we get into the thoracic region. Now, in terms of these lower five lumbar vertebrae, when people have disc bulges or herniations, they typically happen at the L5-S1 level or the L4-L5 level. Those are the two most common, so the two bottom levels of our spine. I already have a video on L5-S1, so I'll put a link for that down in the description if that's what you have going on. L4-L5 is this next level, and in between our vertebral bones, we have the discs, and you can see this model actually has kind of shows what a disc bulge would look like. This is actually the L3, L4 level, so it's one level up. But you can see when the disc bulges, it can push out near the nerve root that's coming out that area. We have a nerve root coming out at each level. When people have an L4, L5 disc bulge, it typically affects the L5 nerve root more than the L4 nerve root just because of the location of the nerve root. So in today's video, we're gonna look at symptoms associated with L5 nerve root compromise both sensory symptoms and uh, sometimes people have a loss of strength or a loss of motor function. So let's go ahead and get into the first exercise. Our L4 and L5 nerve roots come down and join to make our sciatic nerve. They are a few of the nerve roots that go into the sciatic nerve. So when people have L4, L5 nerve root compromise, they will typically have sciatic nerve symptoms. So pain, numbness, tingling in the sciatic nerve distribution. So this usually means that it goes down kind of the back inside of their, their upper leg down into kind of the side of their lower leg towards the front and even into the top of the foot, the dorsum of the foot. So if you have any kind of numbness, tingling pain through that kind of sciatic distribution, then uh, you'll want to implement these exercises. So the first one here is a nerve mobilization, which is meant to help reduce sciatic nerve pain or pain coming from the branches that contribute to the sciatic nerve like L4 and L5. So what you're going to do is use a long towel or something like this. this is a stretch strap. It's nice. It's got little loops. Uh, it's useful for stretching. I'll put a link for this down in the description if you want to get one. You're going to hook it over your foot of the leg that has the symptoms. You're going to lie on your back and then from here I'm going to use my arms to bring my leg up until I just start to feel any pain, stretch, numbness, anything that kind of goes down the back of my leg. Don't pull up too high. You're not going to pull up and create a lot of pain. You want to go just to where those symptoms start. And then we're going to do what's called a nerve mobilization or nerve flossing. So I'm going to do kind of a little movement, a little dance here between my foot and my head. So what's going to happen is when my foot points, I'm going to lift my head. So I'm going back and forth like this. And then when I rest my head, I pull my ankle down. So what I'm doing here is putting tension on different spots of the sciatic nerve. So when I rest my head, my nerve is relaxed up here, my, my spinal cord is relaxed, but I'm putting tension on my ankle and on the sciatic nerve's branches down by my ankle. And then when I point my foot, I relax the nerve down there, but I put it on tension up here on my spinal cord. So I'm just going back and forth, and this helps the nerve slide and helps in the research we see that these types of mobilizations also help improve blood flow to our nerves, which can help improve the health of the nerve and reduce pain. So you're going to think about doing 10 to 15 reps of this. When you do a set, then you can just give it a break and see how you feel. If you are brand new to this exercise, I just do one set in the day. Sometimes when we do too many nerve mobilizations, it can make nerve pain worse. So you kind of have to experiment with this and see what's best for you. If you do a set and it feels good, then you could try another one, you know, the next day, maybe you do two sets, something like that. Just figure out, you have kind of experiment with things and figure out what dosage is best for you. Okay, so this is our first exercise. It's a sciatic nerve mobilization. Okay, so the first exercise helps with uh, numbness, pain, tingling, all of those potential sensory symptoms that can come from an L4 or L5 disc bulge. Our next two exercises are gonna address the weakness or motor aspect of these issues. Again, when people have an L4, L5 disc bulge or herniation, it typically mostly interferes with the L5 nerve root. Now, L5, that nerve root goes to a couple of key muscles, and the main one is actually one of our big toe muscles. So one of the hallmark findings in people who have an L4, L5 disc bulge 
is weakness in their big toe. So this is something you can kind of test, and if it's weak, then you can actually add exercises to strengthen the muscle. It's called extensor hallucis longus. So if you look down at my big toe, the L5 nerve root helps lift our big toe into dorsiflexion. So if you can't lift your big toe, well then that's a sign that your L5 nerve root is compromised. If you can lift it, but when you go to push on it, it's really easy to push it down compared to your other side, then weakness can also be a sign of an L5 nerve root issue. So what you can do is just a simple exercise, just doing reps like this. I know it seems kind of silly, but doing reps like this, you can think about three sets of 15 to 20 reps, just spread them out throughout the day. This will help to strengthen. You can see the tendon here for extensor hallucis as long as this muscle's up here in the shin. So when we lift like that, it will actually increase our neuromuscular control, our ability to recruit that muscle, and will strengthen the extensor hallucis longus. And it seems like kind of a silly small muscle, but this toe dorsiflexion, toe extension, is important in function. It helps when we pick up our foot when we're walking. So we don't want to neglect this. You know, it's a muscle you want to work on getting back if you're noticing any kind of loss of control or weakness. So again, just think about three sets, 10 to 15 reps, 15 to 20 reps, you can go up even a little higher and spread them throughout the day and just try to work on activation of this extensor hallucis longus muscle. The one other muscle group we wanna think about in terms of the L5 nerve root and the L4 nerve root are the dorsiflexor muscles on the front of our shin here. These muscles help to lift our foot off the ground into ankle dorsiflexion, which we need when we're walking. If we can't do that, if we can't lift our ankle up, we'll catch our foot and we can trip and this is called foot drop, or you might also hear a foot slap when people put their foot down and it slaps. That's also related to weakness of these dorsiflexor muscles. So a test you can do on yourself first is see if you can heel walk. This is something we do in the clinic. People who have compromise of their L4 and L5 nerve roots often can't heel walk like this. So what will happen is when they try to do this, their foot will just slap down. They can't keep it there. It'll just keep slapping down. So what you wanna do first is just see, can you keep your foot up in this dorsiflex position, can you squeeze those muscles and maintain this position? If you notice that it's really challenging on your affected side, then we wanna incorporate an exercise to recruit those muscles and strengthen them. So the best way to do this is to go into a seated position like we were for our big toe. So you're gonna sit down and same kind of thing, rather than lift the big toe, you're gonna lift your ankle up into dorsiflexion, just kind of taps like that, foot taps, and you're gonna think about three sets again, of 15 to 20 reps, just lifting as far as you can, go through that full range of motion. You can compare it to your other side. You know, if you've got weakness, sometimes it's helpful to compare, look at it, see like, okay, well that's my normal range of motion. And then try to work on that over time. And it's really gonna squeeze this tibialis anterior muscle. It's gonna cause it to recruit. Tibialis anterior is right in the same compartment as our extensor hallucis that we were working a second ago. They're all right here in this front of the shin, this muscular compartment. So again, just think about foot taps like this going through ankle dorsiflexion and think about three sets of 15 to 20 reps. Again, spreading those throughout the day to help improve muscle recruitment and boost your function. Thanks for checking out today's video. I hope these exercises help you if you're struggling with these symptoms. I also have more comprehensive programs for nerve pain in my book and in my app. If you go into the low back chapter of my book, I've got this specific nerve pain program that starts on page 304. This is really meant to help people with sciatic nerve symptoms or disc herniations. So, this is a more comprehensive program. It guides you through three phases of rehab and has pictures of me doing the exercises, very similar to a program you would get if you came to see me in physical therapy. So those are all pictures uh, of the exercises. In my app, you will get videos. So if you'd like a more comprehensive program that's video-based, here in the app, you can scroll through different body regions. And in the back section, I've got a nerve pain program, again, for sciatica, disc herniations, and stenosis and you can go through the different phases, click on the exercises and watch them, and I will explain how to perform them. Again, a more comprehensive program that allows you to do your own physical therapy at home. Both the book and the app have programs for the entire body and the most common orthopedic conditions that we see in physical therapy. I will put links for both these resources down in the description. Thanks again for watching today's video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.